guys, this is Sarah, and today I'm doing a book review. Today's book review is on Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. Let me tell you, it feels really weird holding a book while reviewing. I'm not used to it at all. I just recently got this for Christmas, even though it arrived in January, and as luck would have it, I had it on my February TBR, and it was one of the first books I read that goes along with my theme. So I decided, why not review it? So here we go. I give the plot of this book 4 out of 5 stars. I found it, it was very average paced, not too fast, not too slow. There were some really cute parts, and I love the descriptions of Paris. There are some small up and downs in sort of the movement of it. Some things were very upbeat and very, not action packed, but very fast forward and very emotionally driven and some other parts were just kind of lulled. I found a few of the point points to be a little bit bothersome just personally with things that I do not agree with. But overall, I found it to be very cute and romantic, and there were some parts that I definitely laughed my butt off. I gave the writing style 5 out of 5 stars. I think it's an amazing contemporary writing style. I absolutely adore Stephanie Perkins' writing style. It's so full of a life and engaging. It feels like the main character is talking to you, which is one of my favorite parts about contemporary. I feel like I want to connect three times as more three times more than I usually do with any other genre because it's such a thing that could happen because contemporary there's no crazy world, there's no extra things, there's no made up things, there's just life like how it should be and so I like being extra connected to the characters and her writing style definitely made that happen. I gave the characters 4 out of 5 stars. I loved them in general, the main characters and the supporting characters. I thought they were all very complex, very well created individuals. And it's not, I connected with them on a good level. It wasn't a great level like, oh my gosh, this is me, or oh my gosh, they could be my best friend. And so I wasn't completely in a mood with them, but I did enjoy them, and I felt connected to them, and they were very cute and awesome. Anna, I loved her quirkiness. She has some personality traits that are reminiscent to someone who's very close to me. So I found them to be cute and funny, and I found her to be your typical teenage girl. She's a bit impulsive, she's a little bit dramatic, and a bit emotional, but that's kind of the point. She's your typical teenage girl. And though there were times when I was very frustrated with her and I want to be like, oh my god, it's understandable and I'm pretty sure that was on purpose. Now, Etienne. Etienne, Etienne, Etienne. Oh goodness. I loved him. I thought he was so very charming and funny and just cute and good looking and nice all around guy but my favorite part about Etienne is how openly vulnerable he is. He's not one of those guys who will act tough and be like no this doesn't bother me, this doesn't affect me. He's the type of guy that openly talks about his problems with his friends. He shares them. He asks for support. He is not afraid to cry or to be upset or to be angry and it's so refreshing from a male character, male main character in a contemporary for someone who's going through a lot to openly show himself and his emotions. So I really, really liked him. Now I'm going to put the book down because my arm really, really hurts. I don't know how you guys hold them up like that the whole time. Like. Seriously. Like I said before, I really, really liked this book. I enjoyed the plot and everything. And there were some points in it that particularly bothered me because of certain personality traits of mine and personal morals of mine. But overall, it was very cute. I adored the setting in its descriptions. Paris, to me, is that one 
reachable vacation spot and I'd love to visit it and I love how Stephanie Perkins took the time to describe as many little bits of Paris as she could because she understands that the people who are probably reading this book may have never been to Paris. And so you feel so Parisian, like Anna says, because you are being immersed into this new culture, this new place, and everything, every little bit, bit of cultural difference is described to you so you can be as connected to the setting as the characters who are actually in it. And I really, really appreciate that and it made it twice as more enjoyable as it probably would have been if she hadn't taken that time to be extra patient and extra focused on that part. I thought that Anna's transition from America to Paris to new school and all those type of different things was very realistic, but at the same time it was very fresh. She was hesitant at first, nervous, shy, and slowly but surely she begins to open herself up to not only Paris but to people and to having friends and to actually enjoying the experience because in her situation when you're uprooted without having the choice to say if you want to be or not, it can leave a sour taste in your mouth even if you are in Paris. And I love how she made the choice to open herself to the experience and to actually enjoy it after a while. Sometimes she was a little bit dramatic. She took things to a point that were not necessary, exploded on things that she should not have exploded on, got in a fight with a girl in the bathroom where it just wasn't necessary, cried over things that were just like, okay, let's look at the bigger picture. But again, I'm sure that was on purpose. You're trying to see her as a little bit more stereotypical than you probably imagined it to be. She is a teenage girl uprooted from her home. I mean, come on. So I understood it, so it didn't bother me as much because I got it. I I was no I understood where Stephanie Perkins was coming from, so I wasn't as annoyed as I probably would have been if I hadn't. I love her quirky personality traits, most importantly her film obsession and her OCD. If you don't know what OCD is, it's obsessive compulsive disorder. Part of that is cleanliness and being obsessed with being everything being clean, which is something that she has. A very close friend of my family and of mine has OCD, so I enjoy watching or reading more importantly. I enjoy reading people who have that particular quirk because to me it's not bothersome, to me it's endearing and I love that about her. I love how people would a little bit poke fun at her so she'd be comfortable with her quirk and I loved her film obsession. I thought that was something very interesting to add to her personality that is new and not really used before. I mean if some people, if they want to be, they're obsessed with films, it's because they want to be a movie star. She just wants to critique them. And I thought that was really cute and quirky and not something I would have expected, so I really liked that. Like I said, I love Etienne. I found him very funny and charming, obviously gorgeous, which in a normal guy, it could have made him a really big jerk and taken by anybody else, but written by anybody else. But except for Stephanie Perkins, it probably would have created a arrogant, sort of overly confident guy. But I love how Stephanie added that vulnerability to his personality to kind of counteract those amazing qualities that he has. I love how open he was about his mother's illness to his friends. There's some people who just don't do that, and especially guys, because from when you're young, they sort of teach men to be more closed off with their emotions and want to act like a girl. And I love how he didn't have that problem. I love how he talked about his problems with his dad, how he wanted to go home and be with his mom and how he didn't like his dad. And it was something that made him vulnerable, that showed that he wasn't perfect, that his family wasn't perfect. And he wasn't afraid to show Anna that, he wasn't afraid to show his friends that, and he wasn't afraid to show us that. And I really, really liked that about his personality. Although, because he has so many issues around him, he deals with Anna and his girlfriend Ellie and that sort of triangle situation a little badly. From my perspective, I did not like that cheating scene. It, 
personally, as someone who's been cheated on, it's a trigger for me. It bothers me when that is placed in a book, especially because the problem was not that he cheated on his girlfriend. It wasn't like, oh my god, I have a girlfriend. Crap. It was, oh my god, I kissed this girl, and one of my best friends, who's practically in love with me, saw us, and she is the one that I have to look after. Which rubbed me the wrong way. I'm sorry. It's just not something that I can deal with. I thought it was unnecessary to have that. It could have... I mean, I know you want the drama, and it's something that you add to spice up the pot a little bit, but I could have done without it. Especially because their main concern was Meredith and not the actual girlfriend. I mean, I understand they're having problems, but she is the one that was cheated on. You have to know your priorities. The girl has had a crush on you forever, but you've never given her the time of day. Yeah, it sucks for her, especially if she found you, but the real problem is you cheated on your girlfriend. Your girlfriend. That's who is going to be... That's who should be the most upset, and that's who you should first deal with. And that's, like, pretty much the only thing that rubbed me the wrong way about this book. The only thing that I did not like. And I'm glad it was very short. I'm glad it was resolved quickly. But, yeah, that's why it's four stars, because I could not deal with that. Something that I really love in contemporary novels is how the supporting characters help drive the plot. How best friends can tell you and be the voice of reason and be like talk to him when you're having problems with your boyfriend or with your crush and how your guy friend can be the one who has a shoulder for you when you need it and I love the supporting characters in this book I love how they had their own mini plot lines while going in this book it's one of my favorite things I think side characters can be just as important as the main characters and I love how they weren't neglected in this book Overall, I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars. I enjoyed the writing style the most out of it, but I'm not completely in love with the plot or the characters, so it had to be 4 stars. I find it a little bit hard to completely fall in love with a contemporary. Sometimes they're just a little bit too cheesy for my taste, so that's why this is 4 stars. That's it for this video. I hope you guys like it. Let me know if you read this book. Let me know your thoughts on this book. Let me know your thoughts on my pet peeves of this book or on my likes of this book. Let's chat about it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!